I love having table probes on our Haas machine that allows us to use the Fusion 360 brake control so that we can test any tool at any time to make sure it hasn't broken off or to make sure that it hasn't pulled out, both of which can have catastrophic consequences. I wanna show how we program that in Fusion 360, which is frankly fairly simple, but the real takeaway from this video is wouldn't you rather do this quicker? We'll show the custom version of this that changes the cycle time from about 25 seconds down to about six seconds. So there's really two ways to do brake control in Fusion 360. The way we prefer to do it is by going to setup, manual and C, and under manual type, choosing tool brake control. Now you need to make sure your post processor supports this, but most of the stock Fusion posts, certainly in the Haas world, are very well built out and do support this. When you post that code, you get your operation, and then at the end of that operation, you get this line here, G65 P9853, with some parameters. Super easy to do, and no real knowledge or intervention required in terms of custom probing code, et cetera. Uh, the other way we can do it in Fusion, which I don't like, but it's worth noting, is you can edit the tool, and on the post processor tab, you can check break control right here. That still requires your post processor to support it. The Haas will just fine. The problem with that is it does break control every time it calls that tool up. And usually that's not what I want to do. Uh, usually I want to control, for example, when a drilling cycle is done, after all the holes are drilled, which may be a couple, across a couple different cam operations for quirky reasons, then I want to come through and do the break control test. The other nice thing about doing it as a manual NC is there are some times where you want to actually have the break control happen before the operation. But what I don't like about this is it reuses that stock Renishaw code and it's just too slow. It moves down at a controlled feed rate and I get it and it's safe. And look, caveats here, beware. When you're first testing out the code we're about to go into, turn down your feed rate and your app is to 5% or slower. Be right there to check out and make sure this code doesn't result in you crashing your machine or even crashing a tool into your OTS, seriously. But here is the custom code. We have this file called o9613.nc. You will need to copy this over to your Haas main memory folder that it lives there forever. I'm not gonna go into all the detail uh, of what it does other than if you're interested in learning more about probing and uh, using the macro variables within the Haas world, it's been super rewarding. We've had some other videos on that, like this one where we figured out how to grab the macro variables from a Renishaw to let our machine kind of act like a poor man's CMM. And one of the key steps to learning more about this is getting comfortable with two different PDFs. The first one is the Renishaw Inspection Plus for Haas. It is a wealth of knowledge. It walks through all the details of the various Renishaw codes. I generally use it as a reference, not something I browse through, but nevertheless, really helpful. And actually the Haas user manual, the macro variable tables in starting around page 200, offer some of the insights behind some of these code examples. If you're wondering in our custom code here, what does pound 3026 mean? If you pull up in this book, you can see Pound 3026 is referencing the current tool in the spindle. Something that is super important, if you are using either a machine that runs in metric mode, you'll need to change the rapid height clearance because it's currently 0.2 inches and obviously 0.2 millimeters is significantly less. So if it's metric, you'll probably want to increase this to something like five millimeters. And if you're using an umbrella tool changer, you need to adjust this clearance height. But what's great about this program is it's able to leverage the fact that we already know what our tool length should be in the Haas tool table. So we can rapid the machine down pretty close to the Renishaw OTS touch off there. And if, again, if the tool is either broken, meaning it's missing or shorter, or uh, in this case, I just put some silly putty on the end of simulate tool pull out. If it detects either one of the situations, it throws the correct alarm here about tool pulled out or tool is a broken tool. Running this is simple, G65 P9613. Now that relates back to the code the program that we just made and you copied over. Uh, and then the tool number here, example, T7. As always folks, hope you enjoy that and find this useful. Brake control has been great for us because we're not sitting in front of the machine all the time and it's never fun to break a tool, but even worse is breaking that second tool or shoving that tap into a hole that didn't get drilled because that drill broke. And look, we've all had tool pull out for better or worse. PSA though, if you're using ER collets, try to think about torquing them down. Mari Tool has uh, torque wrenches and torque values now for their stuff, which I think is great. Otherwise, folks, take care. See you soon.